I'm wondering... It, oh, did you hear that? Oh, it, it sounds like a barking dog. <laughs> this doesn't look canine at all. Hello, everybody. Grace still plays, and we're back with more Taito Ecology in the Himalayas. No time for BS. We have to do a few things. For one, there were some suggested creatures to be unlocked in the comment section, and I'm certainly going to accommodate you folks with that. One of the ones I remember off the top of my head is going to be the Snow Leopard. So let's go right over to that and make sure that they are unlocked. A beautiful creature and actually one of my favorite cats. My favorite big cats, I should say. I do have cats of my own, but they are substantially smaller than the powerful Snow Leopard. And another one that I had seen was the One-Horned Rhino. And we will be unlocking that. We still have about 300 title coins to use later on. I may unlock some additional plant life. Our plant life is looking... How is it looking? It's looking okay. I'm not really sure if it's spreading or not. Now, I can see here that quite a few of our creatures are not doing as good as I would prefer them to do. So one of the things I'm going to want to do right off the bat is put down several little guys. Didn't we... I felt like we unlocked this little weird critter here. Maybe not, though. Go ahead and put one of him down. What do these look like? Are these the weird critters with the big eyes? No, they're not. This might actually be different than something we used before. Here it is, the Chevrotain. I'm wondering, it, oh, did you hear that? Oh, it, it sounds like a barking dog. <laughs> this doesn't look canine at all. What is a Muntjack? I'm not really sure, we'll find out in a second. Let's use up a bunch of energy first though, putting down some creatures. Oh, 12 more title coins, I'll take those every day. Like the Pikas like the red pandas and we do have quite a bit of bamboo for these guys too actually we might want to put some bamboo a little bit closer to where i made these pandas we'll kind of put it right down here that should make them fairly happy i'm pretty sure they can get to that bamboo actually they can get to all this bamboo so i'm not worried about that at all look at how tall this bamboo is compared to like these uh, uh oh that's a pomegranate i was gonna say the rhododendrons but i think that the rhododendron is over here Look at the flowering this thing is doing. Let's zoom in a little bit on this. That is beautiful. That's almost like, it's almost like full of roses or something. Very interesting red and green coloring. Uh, when you put it next to these blue poppies, that color scheme is just magnificent. Moving over this way. I think some more joint furs are never a bad thing, as well as some more fairy grass. Let's go ahead and put some more fairy grass over here, too. We don't have too many more marmots left, I'm noticing. About there, that should do some good. And another fern over here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and unlock another one of these plants. But what one do I want to unlock? We have an oak, a cedar. You know what would be cool? A nice tall tree. What's bigger, an oak or a cedar? Probably the cedar, but the oak has both fruit and leaves. Let's go ahead and unlock this. It still leaves us with 144 Taito coins. Plus, I always usually have Taito coins, uh, bonus Taito coins when I come back to you guys. So we should have plenty to unlock more creatures in the next episode. Where can I put this thing? Holy cow. All right, I can put it over there. There we go, that is a decent sized tree. It's not like massive like I was thinking. Himalayan birch might be okay. I'm not exactly sure how big a birch tree is. There we go, put one over there. Quite cost effective at 25 energy. I would be surprised if this is the appropriate cost for this. You would think it would be much more, especially considering how much fruit, how much fruit and leaves it has on it. I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but that looks like it has quite a bit. Put one there. And if we zoom around this way, I think I'd like to put one more maybe on this hillock as we start expanding. Now that we have a couple more trees and plants, 
I don't mind so much putting down... Let's put down some more red pandas, actually. Put down one more shot of those guys. And... I, you know, I do want to put down a snow leopard. We're going to start moving into this next zone, though. I remember someone had mentioned, like, one predator per zone. And that's what we'll do. We're going to put the snow leopards over here. Now, I'm pretty sure that rhinos are, I'm assuming, omnivores or something. Go way over here. Herbivores. Okay, I didn't actually know if they ate any kind of meat or not. So, here's what I know. Apparently, they do not. So, since they are herbivores, we could put them... Uh, back over in this zone and I'm sure oh, let's take a look at these snow leopards real quick though look at that look at that spot pattern very neat how how far is their kind of range of motion I'm wondering I'm just I just wanted to make sure that they can get food if they need to oh yeah they can they <laughs> wow they span they span all over this place oh, I just saw a Bengal tiger taking a quick rest in fact, I might put down a Munt Jack right about here as well. And I definitely want to get a Pollinator kind of moving this way. We have quite a few to choose from. Some really neat stuff. Where are those butterflies at? There we go. The Paris Peacock Butterfly. I'd like to use one of those on this side. Right in this way he can hit those couple of trees and he'll be able to pollinate this area over here as well as we start expanding around into zone two how about some more marmots i don't think more marmots are ever a bad thing let's go over here to some plants ah the wood apples i remember the wood apples being quite the tree that everyone seems to love and enjoy pomegranates are the life of the party as well <laughs> in Taito ecology at least for elephants they sure are a little bit of goji now, while we're waiting for our energy to regenerate, I gotta learn about these munchaks. Since you're the diet, the munchaks are omniv omnivorous. Not only do they eat grasses, bushes, and fruit, but they'll eat bird eggs, small mammals, and even carrion. That is not the type of creature that I would expect to eat eggs, mammals, and carrion. It looks so much like a cute little deer, but what you don't know <laughs> is that it'll eat just about anything. Tigers and leopards eat the muntjac, and the offspring can fall prey to wolves as well. If a muntjac senses a predator, it will bark to alert nearby muntjac and to let the predator know it's been seen. It will bark for up to an hour until the predator either leaves or repositions itself. So essentially, the muntjac just annoys the living heck out of whatever it comes into contact with that it doesn't feel good enough to associate itself with the social life. Muntjacks exist both diurnal and nocturnal behavior. Oh, I'm exhibit, I'm sorry. Adult monk jack monk jacks are solitary. Males will only allow other males to enter their territory if they have incomplete antlers. This signifies that the other male is still a juvenile or otherwise unfit to mate with any of the females in the area. Like Dusk deer, or musk deer, munt jacks have elongated canine teeth that they use to fight other munt jacks. Munt jacks canines are much, are much shorter, however. So musk deer with the long canines did not know about that. Let's take a look at some of these different zones that are going on here. The group of red pandas is low population. I figure I pretty much know why. I'm assuming they're getting feasted on. Most likely by tigers, I would assume. They're definitely not hungry, so I'm not worried about that at all. Let's go over here to our grasses and put down a few more of these. And, oh, thank you for the more title coins. I will be happy to have those. Put down one more of these. Now, you guys know I want to see some rhinos, and I hope you guys do too. Because this should be the second largest creature next to the elephant. 70 cost. Pretty darn expensive. And it is the last creature that we can actually unlock. It says here, this consumer is tough to eat as an adult. I'll bet it's a rhino for goodness sakes. Here we go. Let's put this rhino down see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Look at those. Look at that real thick hide. Oh, you hear that sound? 
That is the sound that a rhino makes, and this is how a rhino sleeps. Kinda, kinda burying its head right into the turf. But with a thick skull like that and a horn, I guess he really doesn't consider too much what it feels like headbutting the ground. <laughs> the cold, frost-bitten ground. Let's read about these rhinos. Rhinos are herbivores and eat grass, leaves, and branches. The one-horned rhino has an upper lip, which it curls around plants and pulls into its mouth. Rhinos have no major predators. Those juvenile rhinos can fall prey to tigers or other big cats. Rhinos form a symbiotic relationship with many birds. Birds will perch on the rhinos and feed on the parasites that reside between the lumps of skin called tur tubercles on its body. Oh, look at this. The developers put the little thing in there that tells you how to pronounce something. Yes, I like this. Rhinos can be active during the day or the evening, but most of their daytime activities involve wallowing and eating aquatic plants. Rhinos are largely solitary unless a mother is taking care of its offspring. Otherwise, rhinos may congregate around wallowing grounds. And thus, just like every cartoon ever made, we are used to seeing rhinos in pools of water with a bird sitting right about here usually, or sometimes right on the head if I remember all those old Looney Tune commercials. Commercials. Cartoons, there we go. I guess it would happen in the commercials as well, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Rhinos will mark the territory by defecating in a pile and growing that pile over time. Some of those piles have been known to have grown over a meter tall. Not exactly the best bit of information. I, well, not the cleanest. I guess it is pretty unique to know, though. So if you're ever trying to impress your friends or parents or relatives or anyone else that you know with your knowledge of rhinos, that is a unique one, and I doubt many other individuals will, <laughs> will be able to spout that off the top of their head. Let's put some ants down, along with, where are, here we go, this pangolins. I want to get at least a couple of these guys down, and maybe another marmot as well. We're going to definitely need to put down a whole bunch of more grasses, though, because I imagine this rhino, where is he going? Oh, are you going to this banj oak, perhaps? See what happens when he gets there. It's leaves, 250 of them. Wow. Rhinos definitely know how to eat, and they definitely know how to sleep. <laughs> Eating and sleeping, the life of a rhino, not too bad if you ask me. Again, quite similar. To cats. What are you guys all doing? Y'all moving as one congregation. Going over to the rhododendron. I think I'd like to put a few of these down. Uh, at 60, though, I don't want to put too many of them. That is actually fairly expensive. More poppies, though, would be nice. At only 15 cost of the energy. Kind of put these ones oh, right in front of us. There's some poppies for you right in the face. Hey, right to the Himalayan fairy grass. In fact, you know what? Let's make a bunch of this grass. We need a lot of grass, I think. In fact, we need so much grass because I think one of our biggest issues is I continuously underestimate the amount of grass that any one area needs. Where can I put this grass down? There we go. That did not want to go where I was attempting to shuck it. Shuck and jive this grass right into any place I can get it to go. I wonder if it's having trouble growing because it's all snowy here, I doubt it. Although that would be a neat game mechanic. If the actual areas that you place creatures and the different plants in grow and reproduce differently dependent on what the landscape is. So like, you know, snowy, maybe there's certain animals that like thrive in snow. And I'm not saying that they need to make the game harder. It's not like, you know, animals have to die easier if they're in the snow, more or less, maybe if there was like a bonus to putting animals in this preferred terrain instead of a negative, perhaps they would, I don't know, reproduce faster or they would need to eat less often. I'm not really sure what you can do to benefit animals. Another thing I'd like to see, actually something I would really like to see, is atmospheric effects. And what I mean by that is it would be really awesome 
if it did snow in the game on occasion. So like, you know, you're playing and suddenly it starts flurrying and it doesn't have to blizzard or anything like that. I don't think we have to get, you know, ahead of ourselves with all kinds of crazy effects. But just having a little flurries here and there would actually add quite a bit to the immersion, I feel, especially in a place like the Himalayas. And, you know, the rainforest could obviously have some rain now and again. And another thing, although I imagine, now I am not anywhere near a artist, nor do I have the ability to, you know, do renderings like all these different plants and things like that. But one thing that I would really like to see is the renderings actually like maybe swaying or moving to like a wind. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of a wind current inside of this biome just to give it that effect that, you know, we're inside of this encapsulated area, but it's still alive. You know what I mean? Like it has a climate and that climate has a jet stream almost. So I may be getting ahead of myself. It's just something to consider, you know what I mean? I'm always thinking of just things that I could suggest if I wanted to. So that, you know, if I don't know if one day the game developer is sitting there and they're like, oh man, we've got all this time on our hands. What are we going to do with it all? They could be like, I know. One day, someone had said something about putting in atmospheric effects. What happened down here? This Munt Jack got jacked by this Snow Leopard. Well, whoever said put down Snow Leopards, you were completely correct because the Snow Leopards are having a great time eating everything known to mankind. This Rhododendron is really getting beat up. Let's see if we can put down a couple more because clearly it is a favorite of the animals in the area. One right there for you guys and another one in a little bit once we get some more energy actually you know what instead of going straight into the rhododendron maybe we will put down a little bit more plant life like a couple more joint furs again look at the amount of leaves these things have so it can't be a bad expenditure of energy right you can put down at least one more and then let's take this off and get a good look at some of the wildlife that we've got going on here is that big old powerful rhino taking a little trek where is he going going toward the goji plants it looks like well now he's not going anywhere now he's come to a stop sign or something oh there we go he just he had to take a little siesta taking a bit of a rest Let's see what else is going on over here we've got some low low animal populations going on whatever happened to you guys over here you poor marmots guys getting beat up guys getting beat up by uh the tigers and whatnot i'm sure the tigers are doing just fine oh yeah those tigers are having a grand old time their hunger is full their health is fine they have not a care in the world put down a couple extra marmots i don't think i'd mind that at all put down one over there and perhaps one over there and yeah one more way over there and because we did put down some marmots over here i definitely want to get some additional grasses down just so that they have something to chow down on we have these trees here but i'm not sure if those trees are something that they would like go for right away put down some fairy grass too the marmots don't have a huge area of motion, not like something like a snow leopard, but it's not bad, you know what I mean? Like, they could still reach all these uh, fairy grasses and these joint furs. I, I'm assuming they don't eat bamboo. I would guess, really, the only thing that eats bamboo is probably the panda? I don't know, does anyone know? Do other animals eat a lot of bamboo? It's a good question. I mean, I guess if you're hungry enough, you'll eat just about anything put down just a few more things like these poppies and like you know what one more oak i will put down one more oak put this oak down where can i get you right there is good nice shade tree for this rhino coming over to it you should have some fun all right guys that's going to be it for right now in Taito ecology hope you're enjoying the new animals as we have placed them things are looking a little bit more filled out until the next time stay foxy and much love